According to Mexican mythology, Huitzilopochtli, the hummingbird of the south, was the powerful sun god of war. It is said that this sinister god was born unexpectedly, and his power was so great that he managed to destroy hundreds of enemies as a newborn. The story tells that one morning Kotliku, the mother goddess of fertility, was in the land and house of the gods, the well-known Kotpek doing penance as it was customary. The beautiful goddess walked throughout the kingdom of the gods and besides doing penance Kotliku always kept the temple of Kotpek clean. But that morning, while she was cleaning the great temple, a ray of light illuminated her face, which caused her to subtly raise her gaze. Kotliku was extremely surprised by what she was seeing. A beautiful sphere of fine blue turquoise feathers slowly descended towards her. The feathers were so bright and beautiful that the goddess could not stop looking at them. So she extended her hands and took all the soft feathers. When she had them in her hands, she observed them carefully. She did not understand why those feathers were so beautiful to her. So the young goddess caressed them and kept them in her chest so as not to lose them while she finished with her labors in the temple. After a while, the goddess remembered the bunch of feathers she had kept in her bosom, so she immediately began to look for them. However, the fine feathers had disappeared from her chest and no matter how desperately she looked for them she could not find them. Kotliku remained pensive after the strange event that had happened to her, and since then she felt strange as if something was inside her, but she did not give it importance and continued with her normal life. Soon after, Kotliku realized that she had become pregnant and puzzled she reflected on what could have happened since she had not been with her husband Mixcoto, so she attributed her child to the blue feathers she had collected. The goddess told her other children that she was expecting a baby and told them the story of her conception, but they, far from supporting their mother, challenged and cursed her. For they said that this baby was a great dishonor to the family, and demanded she tells the truth about the father of the child, since they did not believe her story they sentenced the new creature should die. Frightened, the goddess refused to terminate her pregnancy and assured that she did not know who the father of her son was. As she was automatically left on tape after she kept the feathers in her chest, Kotliku threatened her children and advised them not to look for her, as she would defend her son whom she named Huitzilopochtli. Filled with anger, Quelzaqui, goddess of the moon and daughter of Kotliku, gathered her brothers the 400 cents in Huitznawak to conspire against her mother, and thus kill Huitzilopochtli so that he would not damage the reputation of the royal family. Furious, Koilzakwi said to her brothers, We must kill her to recover our honor, who has been able to do this to our mother. The others nodded their heads and supported Koilzakwi's plan to assassinate their mother and Huitzilopochtli. Thus, the children of Kotliku began to rebel against her, led by her sister Koilzakwi, and set out on the journey to the top of Kotpek where their mother was hiding. The goddess, aware of the situation, worried about the life of Huitzilopochtli, and thought about how to protect him from the fury of her children. That night, in the temple, Kotliku touched her belly and asked for the protection of her beloved son with desperation, until a sinister voice said his name clearly. Panicked, the goddess looked to the sides to see who it was, However, there was no one next to her so she thought her time had come. However, the voice spoke her name again and there the goddess realized that it came from her bulging belly. It was Huitzilopochtli who spoke to her. Despite being in her womb, the god showed his power and communicated with the goddess to reassure her. Sacred mother do not fear because I Huitzilopochtli know exactly what to do against the rebels, said the little god from inside the mother. Kotliku, bewildered, remained silent for a few seconds until she felt peace in her heart. The words of her son had comforted her, and for some strange reason she felt safe and protected. On the other hand, Koilzakwi had ordered his brothers to prepare themselves with the best weapons, the best clothes, the best attire, and the best jewelry to go to war, because even though they were too many, they were aware that Kotliku was a powerful and fearsome goddess. However, Kwahuitlikak's son of Kotliku went up to the Kotpek to talk to his mother, because he did not agree with the cruel attack that his brothers were planning, so he told his mother that he would support her and would be on her side. As soon as he finished his words Huitzilopochtli spoke to him immediately. Huitzilopochtli had seen the kindness and support of his brother, so he told him not to worry, but he needed his help to execute his plan and survive, so Huitzilopochtli said. 
I need you to be among the Sensenwitz Nawak and appear to be on their side and as soon as you have the opportunity come and tell me everything they plan to do to attack us so I can be prepared. Quahwitlikak, delighted, agreed to help Huitzilopochtli and descended to his brothers and pretended to be on his side to find out everything. So hours before his brothers ascended to the Kotpek he set out on his journey to his beloved brother Huitzilopochtli. When he arrived, he went directly to his mother's womb and spoke to his brother. Huitzilopochtli, unfortunately, Koilzakwi has planned a fatal war against you and wishes to assassinate our mother to take you out of her womb and murder you. Little Huitzilopochtli told him to calm down, for what he had planned was nothing compared to the other gods and that they would be about to witness something never seen before. You must be attentive, Kwahuitlikak, and you must warn me where the rebels are coming, said Huitzilopochtli. And so, he ordered his mother to lie down in the temple and maintain a position as if she were about to give birth, and Kotliku did so. Huitzilopochtli said that he would lie in wait for his murderous brothers and that as soon as they were near the temple Kwahuitlikak should tell him immediately. My brother, they have already reached the summit. The feared Sensenhuitz Nawak have arrived and they come led by the powerful Koilzakwi, said Kwahuitlikak very alarmed. At that moment, Huitzilopochtli came out of his mother's womb and gave a great war cry that echoed throughout the mountain. The god was born as a full-grown adult. His face was painted with delicate orange stripes, and the most curious thing was that he was perfectly dressed for war. He wore a beautiful and large shield full of eagle feathers, as well as his sandals were surrounded by blue feathers and his head was adorned with a crown of fine feathers. His body was entirely painted blue, and he was slender, muscular, and perfect. He denoted supernatural strength, and his legs were as swift as lightning. Thus, being already standing, Huitzilopochtli invoked the sacred Zayakotl, which was the most powerful weapon of all the gods. The sinister serpent of fire was a powerful legendary spear that looked like lightning itself, so this was well received and wielded by the god, who thus became the great god of war. With this spectacular weapon in his hands, Huitzilopochtli was so powerful there was no one in the cosmos who could defeat him. Kotliku lying on the floor, and Kwahuitlikak at her side were stunned by the unexpected and peculiar appearance of Huitzilopochtli. They were paralyzed to see the powerful god come out of the womb of the goddess. Huitzilopochtli ran towards his brothers, determined to finish them off, and as soon as he found them one by one, he annihilated them with his great strength and with his powerful divine weapon. There was no power that could defeat him, not even among all his brothers could they give him a single blow. At the top of the mountain, Huitzilopochtli ended up massacring all his brothers and although many wanted to escape, they could not survive, because Huitzilopochtli chased them until he killed them, except for his feared sister Koilzakwi, who was waiting to face him alone. Koilzakwi was the most powerful of all the Sensenhuitz Nawak, and her great strength made her believe that she could face her newborn brother, so a sinister battle broke out between both gods. The combat was very even. However, Huitzilopochtli unleashed all his power and ended up decapitating the goddess with the powerful fire serpent, thus winning the battle. At the end of the conflict, Huitzilopochtli took possession of the belongings, weapons, and clothing of all his brothers who had died in combat as a symbol of his victory, which was a humiliation for the dead gods. In this way, Huitzilopochtli became the god of war, the powerful god who was born in Kotpek, and the god who was untouchable and invincible. With time, Huitzilopochtli became so close to mankind and men worshipped her with great fervor that they even made multiple sacrifices in her honor, which helped Huitzilopochtli to help them in several conquests, and even told them to build their city. According to the myth, it is narrated that Huitzilopochtli was the one who told the Mexica to build the great Tenochtitlan, since after a great offering given to the god, he communicated with them and told them, Go and find the place where you will build your destiny. You must look for the place where the eagle is on a cactus eating a snake. There you must raise your nation. Thus, the inhabitants abandoned their lands and began to search for the place promised by the great god. For a long time they made a pilgrimage through various territories until one day when they arrived at the limits of the great lake Texcoco. At last, they could see the sign of Huitzilopochtli. They beheld an enormous eagle flapping its great wings, with a serpent in its beak flapping on a great nopal cactus, on a rock in the middle of the immense lake. 
At the sight of the eagle, they all shouted for joy and celebrated that they would finally build their empire as great as the god had predicted.